right so let me okay let me figure out where my okay my screen see that all right so for today we are going to talk about uh how to get help chapter so basically uh this chapter talk about some tips um that people can get help uh for coding if they encounter any difficulties and also some people people to learn our codes if they need help so So uh, over the time, like we see the R uh, error messages, and sometimes you might not have any idea about what these error messages mean. And there's a chance that um, some of the people already encountered the same uh, error. So they probably asked uh, the error messages um, on the internet in the past. So, those questions could also be answered by people who know the solutions. So the first thing that people uh, can do when they don't know what the error message means is to Google those error messages. Typically, uh, if you put error messages plus R uh, to a Google query, uh, you, could be, you could find something like useful to solve your problems. Uh, but sometimes you may have to be more specific, for example, um, adding the name of packages in the Google query in order to narrow down the results. So here, ex the, here is the example. Um, if someone encountered a difficulty uh, of making a bus plot, the first thing they may type is how to make bus plot in R, but uh, if the person can be more specific, they can type how to make bus plot in R and ggplot too. So the second um, keywords uh, should be uh, more useful and efficient in order to find the solutions for that person's uh, difficulty or problems. And uh, I don't know if this is if this is uh, frequent or not. So if the error messages is not in English, um, you can type this sys set environment language to English to change the uh, language into English and then restart the session and then rerun the code in order to get the error message in English. If Google doesn't help or if you cannot find solutions from Google, um, you can also try to find the answers in the Stack Overflow. And I think when you Google your error or your question, Stack Overflow uh, also pop out in the searching um, in the searching contents. So Stack Overflow is also another place to go to if it doesn't show up in Google to find the answers. And the same thing, uh, when you try to find the solution in the Stack Overflow, you type the error message and R, and to be more specific, adding the package name in your search. All right. So I think for this chapter, uh, you want to introduce a page, package called Reprix which is uh, uh, shorten from the minimal reproducible example. So a good rep reprix uh, make people uh, easy to understand what's going on uh, in the code, what is the data, what is the basic code in the code. So under this uh, situation, in this case, sometimes, uh, if you make your code into a short or minimal reproducer, reproducible example, sometimes you can kind of figure out what's going on actually in your code and help yourself. So 
in order to make these minimal reproducible example, the first thing is you have to include uh, the library or any package you use in the code. So try to capture everything uh, which is relevant to the code or error or the missions you try to do. And then make your code minimal. So again, um, since it's called minimal, so you don't want to include any unrelevant information in your code. So remove everything that is not directly related to your problem. And in that way, this session of code could be um, much smaller than, much smaller and simpler uh, object than what you're facing in the real life. And sometimes people's data are pretty uh, complicated. So if possible, uh, try to use like building data or just a subset of data in your code. So in that way, if you want someone to help you, that person can just grab the minima or yeah, the minima um, reproducible example or the minima uh, data to try to reproduce the example and then help you figure out what could be uh, the error, what uh, how the error could happen and try to help you figure out the solutions. So as I mentioned earlier, um, when people are creating a minimal reproducible example, um, they sometimes can figure out uh, what could be wrong hiding in your code and then they can just answer their own questions. So people can also capture the importance of um, their problem in a way that is easy for others to play with. So giving other people a simpler and shorter or smaller code actually increase the chance that uh, people get help from others who might know the solutions. So here, the easier way to avoid the mistake of accidentally miss something problem uh, when creating a replex is to um, use the packages called replex. Uh, sorry, I just saw that. Oh yeah, so beside Google, AI is also the options to find the solutions if the code doesn't work. So the next thing is to talk about the uh, usages of replics. Oh, well, it's actually not. The next thing is, going to be a little bit that's about how to make examples uh, reproducible. So again, uh, your code has to include the package or library you use and the data and the simple versions of your code. And sometimes the error happens uh, when using the older versions of packages. So the first thing people can check is to check the version of packages. So the following here is the uh, example of checking the version of tidyverse packages by typing this function uh, like in a command or in the screen and then run this line. And I think you can also uh, run the function called package version and then type the specific uh, package in the environment to figure out the version of package. Or you can just go to the panel. Uh, well, for me, I like to set the panel on the, the package, like a plot panel on the bottom right side. So if you go to the packages uh, tab and type whatever package you are using, you can also see the version of packages you have in your computer. Sorry. So, okay. 
So here is just an example of using uh, the Replix package. Oh yeah, so Forest provide another way to figure out the function of package by typing the session information in the command. Um, okay, so I would like to run this in my R uh, actually. Let me do this. Let me share my other screen. Okay, so the example of saying Okay, so the example is um this um uh, I don't know how to actually say that, but it's like a empty class is like a database about cars. So if you want to show this database to someone on the internet, for example, like Stack Overflow, um you can use a replix to find a better uh, or easier or simple version um, to pass them on the stack overflow. So let me follow the first step. So these deep put functions um, convert these data set into the object class. And now it's kind of message so you wouldn't really directly pass this data into the stack overflow so the replix package allow you to make this like a structure of data uh, prettier i would say so one way you can do is following the second step copy this output so uh, now this output is in my clipboard and then you can type replix and C A R S and then just pass what I have earlier. Oh sorry. I might have to call I should have I should have this one. This. I may have typo. Alright. So this is the result written from Replix. So if you have a questions or if you want to show someone on the internet about this data set, you can just copy this profile from Replix on the internet. And the other way, uh, I believe there should be several different ways to get this reproducible example. The other way you can try to do is, uh, okay, so now I have, let me just clean this. I actually have, uh, this data in my script, and I name it NCTAR. Actually, it's my cards. I don't know how to say it. But anyway, so now I have this original kind of message type of data in my script. So one way you can do is you go to add in and then uh, random replace. So in the replace function, there are several arguments I didn't say earlier, which I think they should be related to like these um, arguments or selections. So here I have what I want to show to other people in my selection. So I can click current selections and I can select where uh, is my audience, what are my, uh, which one is my target. And then let's say I want to post this on the stack overflow. So I just random. It doesn't really look 
nice as nice as the previous one, but the replics, uh, random replics uh, from the add-ins is also another option to do. Or you can just have list data copy and then random replics again, but now because I already have a data copy, so data is on the click ball, so I can just render it. And here it actually show uh, how the output will look like from this data. So Boris also provide another way for alternative way for deep food. Yeah, I've uh, had seen it lately. I didn't know it for a long time, but there is a, another a package, Constructive, which uh, other than deep uh, really produces the code that one would actually use instead of using structure and adding attributes, uh, what deep uh, does. So it can... Uh, generate several types of objects, for example, data frames, but also others. Um, but on the on the website, there are some uh, examples, mm -hmm. also grouped data frames, um, daytime objects, and stuff like that. Oh, that's nice. I feel <laughs> I learn new things every time during the meeting. Thanks for sharing, please. All right, so let me just go back to my original. Uh, slide. All right, so here, uh, after you have like all kind of result from uh, reference, just spend a little bit, uh, time to make sure the code is easy for others to read. So again, it's kind of like a writing, like before you submit your writing or like your email to other people, you do your proofreading. So it's sensing for coding. Um, make sure there's a, like a note typo or like a space or variable names are uh, confusing to others. So your variable names and space should be uh, concise and informative. And if possible, use the comments to indicate where your problems uh, is so people can, uh, people can kind of like target where actually cause the error and again, increase the chance that other helping you um, get the solutions for your problems. And do your best to remove everything which is not relevant to the problem because the shorter the code is, the easier to get help and easier to understand uh, what is wrong in the code. So here is just kind of like sensing, but uh, address the importance of um, making your same example as small as possible. So try to use a smaller subset of your data, but still re relate to the problem. And then finish by checking how uh, you have made your examples reproducible by like ending and starting a new session and then copying and pass your script and just run again, see if you can get the same error you have earlier. So this actually spent time uh, practicing. I mean, yeah, it was take some time to practice and learn how to make good, small, uh, reproducible examples. However, learning to ask questions, including call and spending time to make the call reproducible will eventually pay off as like, we are learning not R, so making this ever will help people learn R. And here it just like um spending time preparing um ourselves so to solve problems before um the problem happen 
by spending time in learning art each day will pay off uh, in the long run. So short-term goal is learning uh, uh, like a little piece of art information every day, but in the long term, you will, you will find out you actually learn a lot just by like every single day small exercise. So here, providing some like um, website blogs you can check out to get like new information. So tidy first blog provide the uh, new information on what the tidy first thing is doing, and our weekly also um, provide the updates of R. So that's all for today. Does anyone want to add more information regarding this topic? That was a great summary. I've definitely been burned by the uh, Stack Overflow community a few times when I first started using it. I, I and I feel like you know the R community and the Slack channel here is a lot friendlier to beginners than uh, than what I've experienced on Stack Overflow. I'm not sure if it's gotten better on there. It probably hasn't, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wish I knew this information when I first started, for sure. Yeah. It was also my first time to know I can prepare the code in this way. Yeah, I never knew about those add-ins. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Those are pretty neat features. And, and thank you, Flores, for sending that construction package as well. As far as uh, chat TTP or any of the... Um, kind of uh, transformer-based uh, machine learning stuff. I've noticed it's annoyingly iterative to the point where it's like, I could have solved this faster if I just thought about it and uh, reprogram it myself. Uh, sometimes anyway, I'm not sure uh, if anyone else has had any other experience around that. I do use chat GPT to solve the coding problem, but sometimes it is not precise at all. So it still need people to chat whether chat GPT makes sense or not. It is great for color palettes though. I'm like, oh, I need four different stratified colorblind uh, friendly color palettes and it'll give me the like um, text code for it. And I'm like, oh, this is great. It saves me a lot of time looking for it, so. Well, in my case, it's that uh... I, I have a background in C programming. So sometimes, for example, I, I, I know something and I see um, I can do it in C with a for loop. And I say, okay, this is what I know. This is how I would do it. But how is it in, 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 in R? R, sometimes I don't even, even have a clue. So then I say, okay, this is what I want to do. And it will give me some code that may not execute um, correctly, but at least it gives me some things that I can either iterate with with uh, um, with chat TTPT or, or, or one of the others, or it will give me some indication as, okay, um, it is using this, uh, this type of uh, functions of these names of functions, and then I can go search for myself about those functions. And, and, and I sometimes with leaflet, I, I remember, it gave me something with leaflet that wasn't uh, okay, but then I found a tutorial with leaflet and then uh, I, I, I ended doing it. In. And when I had some code that was more or less working, I came back to him and tell, told him, her, whatever, and told them to um, add features or add colors or add something. But that was using a base that was already working. So in my case, it has been uh, helpful for that kind of uh, work. That's Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I'm learning. Uh, I'm learning. I'm using. I'm doing Advent of Code this year, and uh, I'm learning Rust through that process. I think I might just start saying, "I know how to do this in R," because I know how to do it in R, but I have no clue how to do it in Rust, right? So I might actually do that. I didn't. I didn't even think about that. Thank you. All right. Did you do? Did you see the one of uh, the Hanukkah data? That's another. Uh, that's another one. Uh, it, it's it. It. Uh, Donald in in the in the chat. I put a link to the Hanukkah data because it was eight days, and I did it in R. But uh, I I I had to cheat. I I did some 
the thing, like you said, some of the things I said, okay, I think I can do it with the for loop, but then I, I did it with a, um, and let chat GPT help me to, to trans translate it, so to speak, to, to R. I don't know if wow. you know that one, but, but uh, I, it's, it finished yesterday, the hand okay of data, which are puzzles also that you can solve um, by looking at uh, data and CSV files. Oh, awesome. Great. No, I haven't looked into that. Oh, thanks. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if uh, no one else wants to share some extra information or their experiences, I guess I'm gonna call for it today. All right. So thank you for everyone joining today's meeting. Yes, I see you guys the following Friday. Uh, happy early, no, merry early Christmas. <laughs> Same to you.